is electric. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Norfolk. And a uh, sunrise in Norfolk is about seven o'clock in the morning here. And yeah, we can't we wait until March time when uh, we're going to have more sunlight, more solar generation, and better mornings than this. I really am fed up with the dark days from December. Uh, dark in the morning, dark at night, dark during the day. The stats have been awful. But if we learn anything from watching this video and the stats that are in it, if you're going electric, solar panels, batteries, electric cars, etc., and great electric tariffs, even in the worst month of the year, even in December, the numbers are pretty good. And if you're wondering why the hell I look at these numbers and why they're so important, uh, I've got better things to do in my life than look at stats and numbers, etc. Well, each to their own, I guess. But for me, I like looking at the numbers because I want to understand what's going on and appreciate the decisions we're making and how good they are or not. And the sort of thing that I look at is this. What the hell is going on with this chart and why have we used so much energy in December? And I want to understand it. I want to know why. So let's delve into the stats and find out. And if you're wondering why my voice is a little bit croaky this morning, I'm still recovering from a cold. It really stands out this month, 849 kilowatt hours of energy imported from the grid. And that's way more than any previous December. If you look across at the previous years, 2021, 2022, we were just breaking 600 kilowatt hours imported. So it's a full 250 kilowatt hours more than normal. It's 350 kilowatt hours more than last month. But of course, that's just the import from the grid. Add to that the solar generation and what we've also consumed from solar. That takes our consumption to over a megawatt hour. First time ever in my monitoring and recording these stats we've ever had a month consuming a megawatt hour of energy. Okay, these stats from my energy are a little bit inflated. 882 imported from the grid, it said, when uh, in actual fact it was 849. Let's try and account for that uh, extra energy usage then, starting with our Zappi, 340 kilowatt hours. Yeah, that is about 100 kilowatt hours more than normal. Toshiba air conditioning, 175 kilowatt hours. It's a lot, but it's not more than normal. So heating wise, it's not heating. Eddy, heating a hot water, 73 kilowatt hours. That's not more than normal either. Kitchen, 72 kilowatt hours. That's quite a lot, but again, nothing exceptional. Infrared heater in our cloakroom, 35. Cloakroom, 29. These are looking uh, sort of normal for winter heating. So it doesn't look like it's actually heating, but so far it's just the Zappi that's more. Uh, Eddy Solar, that's irrelevant because it's included in the grid number. The En Suite, only 19 kilowatt hours this month. The TV, 17. The, oh, it says Oven and Hob, but that's actually just our main hob, 16 kilowatt hours. Internet, 12.9. That's our. Um, Hub for my energy, the internet router, and also the home assistant hub as well. The guest heating and bathroom. Charlotte came around for a few days and we had a guest round as well in December. So we had some extra room heating on that we wouldn't normally have. And dehumidifier, that just used a tiny little bit. It's so small, I'm struggling to actually click on it. Pulling those numbers out into a pie chart makes a little more sense. 41% went to the Zappi, 9% um, for the Eddy heating hot water, 21% to the Toshiba air conditioning, 8.9% kitchen generally, 4.3% the cloakroom, 36 the cloakroom radiator, uh, the ensuite was only 2.4%, TV 2%. The router and hubs, etc., they're only 1.6%. And our main hob in the kitchen, just 2%. So that's 820 kilowatt hours roughly accounted for um, out of the 849 imported and the just about a megawatt hour consumed in total. The missing bits, the, um, let's say, 150, 160 kilowatt hours that's absolutely missing from that, that's the base load of the house that I can't actually account for because I don't have any monitoring equipment monitoring them lights etc but with solar generation so low at just 149 kilowatt hours this month yep just 149 for all three of our solar arrays five days just five days where the sun actually appeared to shine and we had more than 10 kilowatt hours it really was a dull month so with low solar production 
and higher energy usage, especially on the Zappi. That's why we had to import so more. So it's a double whammy. More on the Zappi, less on the solar it means more import from the grid. That appears to be the reason. So just checking those stats between last December and this December, grid import 597 versus 849, 252 kilowatt hours more import this December, solar generation 86 kilowatt hours less, and Zappi charging 150 kilowatt hours more. That's the main difference, less solar, more Zappi charging, and just to double check, the heating was actually 23 kilowatt hours less this year than last December. So... Basically, it's all down to Susan getting the Kia Soul and uh, going out and driving it so much in December. That appears to be why we had the shocking one megawatt hour of consumption this time. That solar generation, 149 kilowatt hours, was broken down as follows. 83 kilowatt hours for our 3.9 kilowatt solar array. That's with the Solus 3.6 kilowatt inverter. Our third array was just 21 kilowatt hours. That's the three panels on the garage roof and the four panels on the east facing gable. So they're not doing very well at this time of the year. But 21 kilowatt hours out of 141, I'd rather have them than not have them. And finally, the solar edge inverter. That's 2.4 kilowatts of panels with 2 kilowatts inverter power. 45.4 kilowatt hours. That's actually the lowest we've had ever on a December which just confirms, doesn't it, that my solar edge array does not perform well in low light conditions. Proportionally, it's performed the worst of all three arrays. So, yep, if I could go back in time, I would not be putting this solar edge array in with eight panels. So all of that 846 kilowatt hours, you can really see those spikes there where we were charging the highest day at 79 kilowatt hours. All of that energy usage cost us a whopping £78. Just £78 for all of it because it was all bar two kilowatt hours at 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. Because we've got a home storage battery, because we're with Octopus Energy, because we're using the Octopus Intelligent Go tariff at just 7.5 pence. Just out of curiosity, here's a chart here showing if we'd have consumed energy at the same time of day on these different tariffs, just go and the Octopus Agile tariff as well. It would have been £140 on Agile and £111 on Go. Now, the Go one makes sense because there's fewer hours at a more expensive rate. But the Agile one for December, I think we might have ended up with an even cheaper bill because there was some very cheap energy during December on Agile. But of course, this chart is just showing like for like if I used energy at the same time of day. For clarity, here's the uh, financial side of things from Octopus Energy. We were billed 76.71 and £1.76 for the electricity. We had a credit in for the electricity exported, which was, I think, 48 kilowatt hours at uh, £6.39 coming back in. Our direct debit is just £1. I keep a direct debit going all the time. Octopoints, though, redeemed were £55.53 for the saving sessions, which is a huge benefit. So as you can see with export and what we had on the saving sessions and all the extra Octopoints that Octopus Energy gives us, I ended up with a tiny electricity bill. Plus a referral. Yep, somebody uh, used my referral code, which is in the description of the video um, or all of my videos. Uh, so thank you very much for using my referral code because that £50 means I was actually in credit for December, the most expensive month of the year, and I was actually in credit for it. So thank you so much, Octopus Energy, and those people using my referral code. Really is appreciated. And here's the export numbers for the month, 48.97 kilowatt hours, and there were five octopus saving sessions in there where we exported from the battery more than four kilowatt hours gaining us nine pounds each time we did it the rest of the export that's just what we're able to export on uh, any normal day there were a couple of sunny days and because we're now on an export tariff i exported it so as you know, we've moved across now from fit deemed export to um, actually being on an export tariff with Octopus Energy. So we're now paid 15 pence a kilowatt hour for whatever we export, whereas we were paid a deemed amount, half of what we generated on that array. So half of 83 kilowatt hours generated is 41 and a half kilowatt hours. And we used to be paid about seven pence a kilowatt hour. So as you can see at 15 pence a kilowatt hour, we've doubled what we're being paid for export. 
On to something a little unexpected, and that's because of the Octopus Energy Intelligent Go tariff that we're on now. Um, the reason why we're still using 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour for all of our energy is because we don't exhaust our battery. The blue lines here, the blue area at the top, is coming down as low as 40% on the scale at the right-hand side. We're not exhausting the battery. That's why we're using cheap rate energy all of the time. And I didn't expect that from Intelligent. I didn't expect it to actually mean we would use less battery because they've given us more time with cheap rate energy from half 11 um, in the evening till half five in the morning, plus extra slots. And there have been a lot more than I actually anticipated because of that, we haven't been using the battery as much, so we're more guaranteed to be using cheap rate energy, which has been a great thing in December. So, yeah, I am really impressed with the Intelligent Go tariff. It has been better than I anticipated. This my energy chart showing our energy usage, 593 kilowatt hours into the house, including battery charging, 340, as I've said before, for car charging on the Zeppi. But the one here, 73.5 kilowatt hours for the Eddy, heating our hot water through the solar diverter, which isn't actually diverting solar. It's actually heating overnight, mostly at the moment. But that's going to our Mixergy hot water tank, which again is proving very economical. I just realized the other day as well, we're going to see energy usage changing for how we heat our hot water because I used to use it all on the eddy and that included the cleansers. So once every fortnight, we need to heat the hot water in the hot water tank, all of it up to 51 degrees or more to cleanse the tank to avoid Legionella, etc. That's a feature of the Mixergy tank. But because I am now not going to be using our solar excess um, to divert and heat our hot water to 100%. I'm not going to be doing those cleansers so far since we've had the Mixergy tank. I've never had an automatic cleanse. I've done it manually ourselves by heating our hot water to a full tank of water from excess solar energy. But now I'm going to be exporting that excess because it's going to be paying us more to export it than to actually use it. So once a fortnight, we're going to have to cleanse our tank overnight on cheap rate energy using the Mixergy um, algorithms to do it itself. So it looks like my hot water energy is going to change now. Looking at the Mixergy data, it shows that we used 1,989 litres of hot water. That includes heat loss, not just what's coming out of the taps. And that doesn't compare too badly, does it? Um, there's quite a few months there above 2,000 litres. So December wasn't a huge month for hot water usage here in the Warns family. Cold water usage, because yes, we've got a smart meter on our uh, cold water supply as well, thanks to Anglian Water. That's uh, 4,551 litres of cold water used this month. Finally, some interesting stats here, looking at the December comparison of solar generation. Uh, if you look at the green, the 45.4 uh, for 2023 was the worst we've ever had. But the 83 kilowatt hours isn't the worst we've had on our solace array. And that's because in 2021, when we only had 52 kilowatt hours generated, that was when I was testing a Huawei inverter. And that's not actually our solace inverter. So I've got to say, this sort of highlights that solace has been doing really well for us. But on the subject of solar generation, let's have a look at the annual amounts. Last year, 9.2 megawatt hours. This year, 8.55 megawatt hours. We're down 650 kilowatt hours compared to last year. So that's Solus Inverter, the 3.6 kilowatt inverter with 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels connected to it, generated 4,379 kilowatt hours, 4,379 from 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels. That I'm quite impressed with. This one's interesting as well. 1.7 megawatt hours, 1,706 kilowatt hours is what we've generated from that little array. Three solar panels above our garage and uh, four panels on the east gable of the house. So those few solar panels which don't generate that much, 1.7 megawatt hours. I'll take that. It was worth it after all installing those panels. And then our solar edge array, 2.49 megawatt hours is what we generated from that array. 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, 2 kilowatt inverter. And while looking at annual numbers, our annual usage from the grid, 2,506 kilowatt hours. And that cost us a total of £345. 
£345 to charge our electric cars, to heat our house, to run the house, to heat the hot water, to do everything because we've gone electric with everything. £345. Last year, we consumed 2,123 kilowatt hours and that cost us £295. So we've got an increase there. Most of that is actually the standing charge. So we're keeping our energy costs really, really low. This really is a great advert for Octopus Energy and the smart tariffs they offer. Okay, that's it for December. I'll leave you with this image showing how small our generation was at the very right-hand side of this chart at just 149 kilowatt hours. I'm really looking forward to the months ahead now. We should have a similar picture with energy rising in January, February onwards. Really looking forward to that. Thanks again for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me some comments in the video below. Really look forward to hearing how you got on too.